Andy Mogul. Hey guys, Zach Finfrock here for Backyard Effects, where we show you how to make super Hollywood special effects for a cheap backyard effects budget. Today is all about a crazy robotic hand. You guys know the scene in Terminator 2, Judgment Day, when the governor cuts his skin and reveals that cool robotic hand? Well, we're gonna do something close to that, but it'll still be able to be puppeteered so you can see the fingers moving. Get ready for this build, because it's gonna be pretty technical. Hey, Puppet Zack, spin the wheel so we can get this build started. Let's do this. I say that too much, but we're gonna do it anyway. Fishing line, display wire, quarter inch and one eighth inch PVC pipe, elastic, tape, 45 degree angle PVC connectors, T-shaped PVC pipe, spray paint, Random Tupperware containers. Dremel, hacksaw, pliers, a hot glue gun, and a drill. This build's difficulty level is... Eight. Simple time lapse! Woo! The first thing I did was measure an inch and a half for the section of fingers for the robotic hand. Then I cut each piece off with the hacksaw. My robotic hand is only going to have three main fingers and a working thumb. Next, I cut each joint piece using the 1 8 inch PVC pipe. I eyeballed about an inch in length for each piece. Here it is all laid out to where each piece is going to go. Now I had to cut a 45 degree angle onto each joint section. At first I started using the hacksaw, but then I realized the Dremel tool would make it much easier. I had to do this for every single joint section. Then I took the Dremel tool and sanded around the 1 8 inch PVC pipe sections so they were rounded and almost circular around the entire thing. The next step is to drill into every single piece. Each section piece gets drilled on both ends and then each quarter inch PVC pipe gets drilled in right next to where the joint pieces go. Now before I could start assembling the pieces, I needed to cut my strip of elastic that will give the finger tension to stay straight. First thing I did was put the piece of elastic through the bottom piece of the finger and wedged it in between the 45 degree angle PVC pipe and the finger joint itself. Next, I took the display wire and cut four small little pieces that I'll actually use as the hinges for the finger joints. Now while assembling, I had to make sure that the elastic stayed behind and towards the rear end of the finger, so it kept the finger straight when it was fully assembled. As I would put each joint in, I would slide in a piece of display wire through the holes I drilled and then bend the edges so it would clamp together. Once I got done assembling the last joint, I pulled the elastic tight, bent it over the edge of the PVC pipe, and then took a piece of tape and wrapped it around securing the elastic strip. And then I cut away the excess strip from underneath the tape. Then after drilling a small hole on the inside of the finger, I fed in a piece of fishing line throughout the finger itself. You need to make sure you keep the fishing line on the inside of the big joints, but on the outside of the inside small joints. Otherwise, it won't be able to bend down correctly. Once I did that, I tied a knot through the hole that I drilled in the front of the finger, and I've got a working, puppeteerable robot finger. Then it was time to repeat for the rest of the fingers. The next step was the base of the hand. I took the T-shaped PVC pipe, and then used quarter inch PVC pipe scraps, made marks in the T-shape, four holes, drilled into the T-shape, and then made sure the holes were just big enough 
to fit the scrap pieces of quarter inch PVC pipe in. Then, I just put the robot fingers right on top of that. The thumb itself was a little tricky, but with a little elbow grease and some engineering, not to mention my drill and a screw, I was able to secure that on one of the holes on the side of the T-shaped PVC pipe. For my robotic hand, I wanted to go with a big, bulky feeling, almost like Hellboy's arm. So, using a trash can and a couple Tupperware bins, I was able to cut, then hot glue a nice little housing for the hand for the puppeteering. I made sure to do a cool robotic design with the way I cut the Tupperware and trash can. One of the key parts to the puppeteering housing is a bar inside of the container that allows the puppeteer to grip onto the robotic hand, but also be able to puppeteer. All I used was a scrap piece of the quarter inch PVC, cut a piece lengthwise just long enough to wedge inside the larger area of the puppeteering housing, and then drilled two screws from the outside in to hold the PVC into its place. Then I made sure to hot glue and assemble the lower half of the housing. The next step was to get the top of the housing ready for the wires and the robotic hand itself. I cut a small hole in the center of it for the wires to fall down into the housing for the puppeteering. Next, I took a scrap piece from a yard light that I took apart for a previous build and used it for the top of the robotic hand. After that, I took the wires of the PVC pipe and made rings at just the right amount of length for when I feed them into the housing, they're just long enough for the puppeteer's fingers to reach onto. Sometimes the actors aren't going to be able to grab onto the rings, especially when they're not going to be able to see them. I cut a square hole onto the side of the puppeteer housing itself, then added Velcro to each side, and then a scrap piece from the garbage can as well. One of the last steps is to decorate the puppeteer housing. The last step is the painting. And then you're done! Now like I said earlier, even though this isn't technically the Terminator robotic hand itself, it still uses the same principles of the puppeteering. The same thing goes for the Hellboy right hand of doom in those movies. Every time you see a robotic hand that's bigger than a normal glove, or an alien hand or anything like that, it usually uses this style of puppeteering. Tune in tomorrow for the test film. It's gonna be on both YouTube and IndieMogul.com. Leave a comment below and I'll see you next week. Before you shoot, make sure your actor knows what he's doing, because if you just whip it out there, your videos will suck.